Hi everyone. I recently decided to build myself a barred owl nest box. If you check online, you'll find many designs that are very similar. Uh, most of them have a box that is two feet tall, often with just a flat roof. This one I put a slanted roof on. Most of them also have a 12 inch bottom floor in them and they typically range about 13 inches across the front and 13 or 14 inches depth and they're usually made out of three-quarter inch plywood the reason for that is that I think most people feel that that would allow enough uh, purchase for screws to go into with the width width of three-quarter inch plywood half inch plywood certainly doesn't have enough width for that but what it does have is a lot of a lot more lightness a three-quarter inch plywood gets very heavy when you're building boxes of this size this box alone now weighs 22 pounds I just weighed it this morning three-quarter inch plywood would weigh a third more than that probably anyhow I, I wanted to I had the half inch plywood here so I wanted to use it I went and looked at uh, three-quarter inch plywood online and they want seventy dollars Canadian a sheet for that now so it's uh, getting pretty expensive so anyhow this is exterior grade half inch plywood I decided to use it's got plenty of strength there's no issue with the strength it's just a matter of how do you connect the pieces to each other so what I did is I just cut a piece uh, a strip off a two by eight that I had I cut it into a one and a half by one and a half strip of wood so it's like a two by two that you would buy at a store and then I'm just using those in each of the corners uh, attach it to one of the sides at the back for example you can see it in here back there two by twos and they're in all the corners and that's what I've screwed the wood to the plywood to as you can see here the screws are going into those two by twos that provides a real strong connection and I pre-drilled those holes in through the plywood into the two by twos to ensure that there'd be little chance of cracking and there's those are joined in there with one and three quarter inch exterior deck screws so they have good degree of penetration into the uh, two by twos here's the little cleaning flap I added some people online recommend you don't need this that you could just clean stuff out of the hole if if you need to now some people say you, you don't ever need to clean anything but i can imagine a situation where you might get something in here you want to clean out whether it's an old nest that's rotted a bit or old dead animal perhaps or squirrel nest that's no longer being used so anyhow i decided to add the, a little side cleaning flap just with a couple hinges here just on dimensions there were a number of sources online that talked about the advantages of having larger box sizes because you can have several young in here with the adult and on a 12 by 12 inch floor it may get a bit tight so I opted I didn't go to the extreme that some people recommend of 19 inches or 22 24 inches some people talk about that um, and that may be good if you can do it but I took it to 15 inches so this front board is 15 inches across the side boards are 16 inches deep because they sandwich the front the back and the bottom boards so they have to be an inch larger because I'm using half inch plywood and then it's got a standard seven inch wide semicircular top cutout for the entrance this is a standard whole entrance you see on the internet and I've left some overhang of the roof about four inches for rain fall the bottom has holes cut into it to enable drainage and putting these things up there's a variety of different methods online that people suggest sometimes they do just simply recommend a single backing board that you would then screw to the tree at the bottom and also at the top the only issue with that is that as the tree grows it tends to push it off the tree and that can happen in a number of years so I've opted for this method which I've just sort of uh, thought of using the design of the box that I did 
So what I did here, put in an eye bolt through the plywood into and in through the two by two post in here. I put an eye bolt through each side at the top back, you can see here. And I'm going to put an eye screw in each side of the tree at the desired height. And then I'll attach wire, fencing wire from each eye bolt to each eye screw. That'll hang the box into the tree. Still allow for tree growth to take place because it won't be wrapping tight around the tree. I won't have the cable or the wire going right around the tree. It'll just be on the side going to here. Fairly snug but not extremely tight. And then I'll probably just throw a, a screw, a lag screw or a, a longer deck screw into the tree down here on this baseboard. That's why I put the, this board on. Also to give it the, the box a bit of separation from the tree to enable a bit of overhang of the roof here. Now the biggest trick is certainly going to be hanging it. This box as I mentioned is 22 pounds now. It'll get a little heavier before it's done. Not a lot but I do have to put a perch here. If you can get a branch that has multiple small branches coming off it because that enables the young to come out and get onto the branch and sit out on the smaller branches still while they're just prior to leaving the nest fully. Oh, I didn't mention too, in here, just under the hole in here, I've put on three strips of wood, just about an inch wide and 10 inches long to enable the young to climb up the inside. Since this is smooth wood, they can now climb up the inside as they get older to get to the hole entrance. It also allows the parents to have a bit more of something to grip onto when they want to get out. This space here is about 12 inches from floor top to bottom of the hole. The other dimension that I didn't mention, I think this is 24 inches on the front high, 27 inches on the back high. I attach the roof by putting another running board, you can see here, another running board inside here like a, a one by two, just strip screwed into here along here with shorter screws. These are uh, one and a quarter inch screws here, I think. So then, then I could screw the top into that board. So basically all the plywood here is connected into solid wood inside. Anyhow, that's about it. Now I just have to figure out what I'm going to paint it with or stain it with. I think I'm end ending up with an exterior latex paint. Anyhow, I hope you uh, found that interesting and you might give one a try yourself. They recommend putting them up in a tree about 15 to 20 feet high, so that's going to be a fun experience. Most people end up hoisting them up on a rope and then affixing them to the tree at that point, whatever method you're going to use to affix them to the tree. It depends on the tree you're looking at, whether it'll have a branch that you can throw a rope over and tow it up or get a little pulley situated up in the tree on an eye hook or something and then pull it up that way. Should be fun. Hopefully I'll still be around to talk about it after I get it put up. It's already getting late in a way to put these up now for here or certainly further south. Uh, the birds start nesting in March usually so they they could have they could well have their holes staked out already. Um, ideally this would have went up in the uh, fall and then the birds would have had all winter to look around and find the boxes um, but I didn't I wasn't that organized so it'll probably go up in a few weeks or a week or two and then uh, when I can get the ladder out in the woods and then if something uses it this year great if not it'll uh, be up there for any potential future users so I thought I'd do a dry run hanging of the barred owl house today it's pretty cold out but I just wanted to get a chance to see how it was going to hang. So I just picked a low site here at my uh, shoulder height basically. You can see I've got a screw eye into each side of this one foot wide white pine with the chain going down to the eye bolt of the house. The eye bolt remember goes through the two by two in the corner. And then I've got a, a U clip or whatever you call these things. Uh, 
at both ends of the house and up here these little screw down u-clips that hold the chain in place and there's actually a fair amount of snugness just with the two chains alone because of the positioning of the chains the box tends to push down on the bottom it's just showing the attachment mechanism up close again I bolt in the house attached to the chain and the little uh, U connector there and then a U connector here this allows me to I've got excess chain here right now but I just left it like that because I, if I get a bigger tree then I'll need more chain here I don't want to put it too tight or too short here having the house you want some uh, diagonal to it I'm a little bit concerned if there's too much pressure on these eye bolts the box is fairly heavy And I've got the backing board on again down here. So what I may do is when I attach this board to the tree with a lag bolt or a screw, um, I may just put a bit of a block of wood under it to raise it a bit just to alleviate some of the pressure on the chains. So this morning I added this perch because the adults and the young seem to really like perches to come in, land in on as the adults are coming in and when the young come out added a couple side strips here and then found an old uh, broom handle or something that I just cut up and screwed between the two side pieces as you can see too I ended up painting it sort of a a light avocado green thought that would look nice in the woods not to stick out too much so then the plan is to hoist it up a tree about 15 feet high and then basically do the same thing and I screw in each side attaching the base that's about the simplest method I could come up with there's other ways where you can attach boards to the back of the house and then add those onto the trees uh, using different mechanisms to try to accommodate for the tree growth outward um, some people wrap a wire around the house and the whole tree and hang it and that's they're all sort of uh, different techniques to accomplish the same goal but this is the simplest one I could come up with and I don't think a couple eye screws are going to do major damage to the tree either it's not uh, it's just a very small area of the tree overall